Welcome back to my channel Oleg Nesterov Brest. First off, disconnect the negative terminal, because today we are going to do some welding. We'll try to cure these hemorrhoids. We'll have to cut it out. The reason I decided to urgently deal with it is because I don't want the corrosion to reach this corner, in that case I would have to replace it. After cutting it out, we'll clean it and give it another look. So it's clear already that the site is not so bright. It's rotted out, but I cut out even more than needed, exposing its flesh. It is desirable to cover this part as well. Therefore, after cleaning, I will weld on a patch from the back, after which I will cover it with primer. The good thing is this ridge is still unharmed. But we have some work to do, and it's still a long time before we put on the patch. While I'm doing some preparation works, I will cover everything with acid, filling all the gaps. And from the back side as well. The outlook is not that cheerful, but actually Uncle Oleg expected something worse. We were lucky that we started the repair in time, and the car hasn't rotten completely to the corner. Had the rust gotten further, closer to the passenger compartment, it would have been much worse. As you can see, there is also one trick. This cavity is not easily accessible. We'll have to bore a hole to be able to reach there. A hole from the back, or maybe from this side, making sort of access holes. We have something similar here, but this one is poor, you can't reach far from it. You may drill a hole here, treat it from the inside and proceed to other spots. First we'll sprinkle it here, then weld it around. In the meantime, while it's drying, we are getting patches ready. I cut out this patch from foot grade stainless steel, it's 0.8 mm thick. Sorry about the transmitter, I have my hands occupied, so I cannot switch that off. I'll put it here, weld it around as much as I can, and work it from the back. So I'll show you quickly how to cut out a patch. It's complicated to measure everything. So just take a piece of cardboard, put it against the hole and apply pressure around the edges. You get a printout. Just cut it out, but make it slightly bigger. Here is our slightly enlarged patch. And after cutting it out, we'll transfer it to metal and proceed to cut out the metal. Take some epoxy primer like this and apply it generously under the seams. This is already done on top of Tsinkar, a rust solvent. I have here a small hole left, I will not bother with it, I will simply cover it from the back with some sealant. I dried everything out properly. Take this cavity wax, it doesn't have the bad smell, which some of our locally sold products do. You just need to shake it. Also in spots where you can reach, just use the spray normally. And where you cannot, like body seals, connect this pipe. You can stick it inside a seal, a door, and it ends with a nozzle like this. See how it works. As you can see, it sprays all around it. Now we will treat the inside surface. 
The pipe allows us to treat surfaces we cannot reach with our hand. In the sills, above domes, I apply it generously. I'm not afraid of flammability. The main thing, it can reach anywhere. It could potentially catch fire in the dome while welding, but we will not weld that hard. Cover all the seams. This hole, as I've told you, will not be welded. But we can also use it to apply cavity wax once again. After welding, because welding seams, the metal will get red hot and can cause some bad things. So we will wax it from the back as well. It's a bit inconvenient to show you, but as you can see, the patch is a little bigger in size. And we need to put it inside. Because Uncle Oleg does not butt weld. For me to be able to move it easier. I will simply weld a screwdriver to the patch. This system resembles working with a spotter. Welded it and pulled the metal, so that the metal had good contact and would weld properly. Pull it some more. After which Break off the screwdriver and re-weld it to a new spot. As you can see, because of pulling, everything is welded tightly. I will only even it out a bit and keep on welding. Later on we will remove all these bumps. This is what we have after welding. It's all tight, but it does not look very nice just yet. We'll clean it right now using a rotary file on an angle grinder. We will no longer use the welding machine, so you can safely connect the terminal back. It's always a good idea to tighten the terminal properly, if you are afraid that in case of a short circuit you won't be able to take it off quickly. Just install a switch, because the contact on your terminal should always be firm, otherwise the terminals will stick and oxidize. Make sure that after cleaning everything, you use this brush to clean inside the seams, so that there is no scale. And once again, to be on the safe side, treat the seams with Tinkar. In fact, it would be better to tin seams like that. But unfortunately, I have no burner now. Hopefully, when I am doing the second dome, I will buy the burner and I will show you how to tin. It's done with an ordinary solder, in a very simple way and fast, unlike working with a soldering iron. I will show it to you sometime. When Uncle Oleg makes up his mind to fix the second dome, the only drawback here 
is that using Tsinkar you have to spend a lot of time waiting before it dries out. You saw me working with a hairy metal brush. Well, that's what I call it. And the surface is polished now. In order to make it stick, we will sand it with a 120 grit sandpaper. It's raining a bit outside. Here I have a 120 grit sandpaper. And start leaving scratch marks, working manually. Leave the area densely marked. Send the whole area. And after you've made the scratch marks, degrease everything properly once again. Wash out the traces of Tsinkar. There is another option. If you are afraid that Tsinkar would make the paint peel off, you can remove Tsinkar with baking soda. The soda will stop the reaction. In fact, if Tsinkar completed its task, don't be afraid, it will not spoil the paint. And wait a bit before it is dry. We make a pause, so that the degreaser would evaporate. This is the case with repairs like this and standard paint jobs as well. Now take the epoxy primer once again and cover everything. Fill in all the gaps. Here also, proceed in the same manner. After the epoxy primer dries out, make sure you let it dry properly, so that the bottom layer also dries out and dry sand with a 120 grit sandpaper. Make a dense pattern of scratch marks as before. Then I take this microfiberglass putty. This putty has fiberglass in its structure. And apply it. First I try to stick it inside the gaps, using these motions so that our seams would be filled. Bear in mind, I do not level it right away, but first I fill in the seams. And only after filling in all the seams, I start laying the leveling seams. You may put some excess primer like this. Make sure there is as little air as possible. Push it, especially first layers. Do not try to level it. Simply leave a heap like this. And then draw it across. Yeah. 
make sure you degrease it, so there is no dust inside its pores. You see, we have here the grounds, and inside here there is a groove, which means we simply need to add more primer. I will apply some universal putty in this case, which will simply level it out. Here's my universal putty, out of Novol line. There are tons of ways to apply it. Choose whichever is more convenient for you. First I will cover these noticeable scratch marks. I will simply use crossbars as guidelines, fill in putty in between. I apply it liberally, so that when I remove the excess, it could obtain the necessary shape. And now I will draw it across like that. Yeah. Try to remove the air from beneath. I laid a liberal amount to level out the plane and remaining pores and some small inconsistencies I will remove and fix with the third layer. Here's another golden rule. What is it? You guessed it. Let it stay for 10 to 15 minutes for the reaction to be completed. We have a flat surface here, but there are some small pores. We will fill in these pores with the last layer, remove the scratches and then put some more. Here's the last layer and we will sand it with a 240 grit sandpaper. But the goal of today's repair is not the total repair of the car and painting it. My goal for today is simply get rid of rust. I have prepared everything and I will apply some epoxy primer now. with a long drying between the layers. I will not paint it, I've just primed it. And we'll paint it just a tad, wet on wet, so that it doesn't look utterly terrible. This will give me some more time to drive this car. When using spray cans, you should apply paint very carefully, because the paint inside is thinned down very much. And when the summer comes, I will remove this paint and I will repaint the car using the correct color shade. It's done. The dome is ready. Now it will not rust any longer. The last stage is over. We covered it with cavity wax. Here's how it all looks like. Here's what it looks like from the inside. And this is all primed. 
as you can see. Nothing should be able to find its way here. Once again, stay healthy, everyone. I wish you all the best and lots of dough, right?